my teeth hurt. First of all, I would like to thank you glorious people for the reaction to the last video. Arise Army of Truth. Army of Truth, I'm open to suggestions. Thank you so much for how people responded to that last video. And so there's something troubling about the concept of spot fat reduction. I just can't quite put my finger on it. I thought my jokes were bad. Disappoint them at the start of the video, it's all upside from here. And so there are shiznits and shysters in YouTube promoting apple cider vinegar as a fat loss substance or supplement or hack. And they're giving direct causation between apple cider vinegar and insane weight loss, fat loss. And they're getting serious social media bank, i.e. loves, likes, views, shares. The only problem with what they're doing is it's complete nonsense. And also, so many of these junk videos don't instruct people to dilute the apple cider vinegar. That is a small limitation if you want to keep the enamel on your teeth. And so the idea that apple cider vinegar is somehow a fat loss substance is not evidence-based science. There is no direct causation that we can project to you for apple cider vinegar and fat loss. There may, however, be correlation, and this is where people can get confused. But remember, correlation does not mean causation. The idea of correlation, for example, some people may say, well, I drank apple cider vinegar and I lost fat. That is correlation. It was not the apple cider vinegar that was the significant or unique factor in your fat loss. It was the caloric deficit you've created from your overall nutrition and exercise. And the idea of correlation versus causation evidence-based science causation is something that the fitness shysters play on and they market on. So if you're someone below that's saying, well, I lost fat over this period of time and I was taking apple cider vinegar, you have to understand the apple cider vinegar was not the trigger or the catalyst or the unique or significant substance that caused that fat loss. It was the base layer, scientific principles of fat loss, which I've talked about so much, which were. Oh. By no means are you crazy if you drink apple cider vinegar. I want to state this now. This is not to bash on people who drink apple cider vinegar. This video is for the application of apple cider vinegar to fat loss. We have to be very specific when we talk about substances, the actual outcome we're relating it to. And so for example, apple cider vine jar, that sounds right, does have potential health benefits to taking it. For example, regulating your blood glucose levels, but that's more applicable to people with diabetes. Predictably, the shiznits and the shysters are promoting apple cider vinegar directly to fat loss. And just as a quick projection to you, two of the best videos you will find on apple cider vinegar for fat loss are by PickFit. Apple cider vinegar comes from the fermentation of apples into apple cider, then the fermentation of apple cider into its vinegar form. Along with vinegar, some unfiltered forms also contain a slime like substance known as mother of vinegar. Mother of vinegar itself has unsubstantiated claims such as curing acne, alleviating indigestion, and containing antibacterial properties. Some even claim it's the reason why apple cider vinegar can help you lose weight. But the main ingredient in apple cider vinegar, and all vinegars for that matter, is the substance known as acetic acid. And also Nippard, who has the best evidence-based video on this substance for fat loss on YouTube. Now what makes apple cider vinegar special for some of its advocates is the so-called mother. Uh, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any research done on this uh, mother substance to differentiate its effects from the effects of the actual acetic acid or vinegar component. Let's focus on fat loss or weight loss. Now there's really only one high quality study done on this. And so there is a study into vinegar and fat loss. And the study did show that people in the vinegar groups lost more fat than the placebo group. That means it works, right? Well, wrong. And so the actual sponsor of this study makes the vinegar that was used in the study. Slight conflict of interest there. Someone get Eddie Bravo on the phone. So if you like, this piece of research can be thought of as a one hit wonder. It's kind of like vanilla ice. This, this research is ice ice baby. All right, stop, collaborate and listen. James is back with a brand new invention, actually reading studies properly. There are many limitations in the study. For example, the participants were obese people. That is a special population. And so it's highly problematic how you can extrapolate and apply results from a special population to other people. 
Other examples of special po populations in research could be, for example, untrained people or rodents. And the supplement industry love to extrapolate data from rats and give that to as fact. And so those are limitations that you need to be aware of. But the good thing with this research, you could say, is that calories and macronutrients were equated, which is really important when you have studies involving fat loss. There are so many studies out there where calories are not equated and they come up with some magic intervention for fat loss, which is nonsense. But in this study, they are equated. So you could say, well, this is highly useful and beneficial then. However, when you look into the study in more depth, you will see the way that calories were measured was through a food diary, which is perhaps one of the worst ways ever that you could measure calories within research is a massive problem. People vastly misjudge how many calories they're intaking through, for example, food diaries. And when you relate that to the fact that the participants were obese people, who it's fair to say may have a problem with tracking their food quantities and calories, that can increase this limitation. And so we cannot take this research as golden. And in addition, the actual results and the overall weight loss from the intervention vinegar groups were very, very small, very insignificant if you look at the time frame of the study. And very simply, what I would say is just go to Jeff Nippard's video. He very deeply and carefully breaks down these studies into apple cider vinegar and explains how the current state of research we have, the range, the scope, and the depth of research we have, we cannot state apple cider vinegar as directly causal to fat loss. We have one study which did show fat loss. However, the methods used were severely limited. And so we cannot take that as golden or fact or set in stone. We simply cannot do that with integrity. But the big bucks in the beginner trap fitness industry are to give direct causation between a substance which is not evidence-based, but oh, it's so catchy. If you only knew the power of the dark side. So apple cider vinegar, is it magic? Yes. Is it cod swallop? No. Will it cause redonkulous fat loss in a ridiculous amount of time? Yes. Have I just lost my integrity? No, but is my bank account looking healthy as f And interestingly, there is a study where vinegar is related to decrease in appetite, etc., because it made people feel like vomiting. You don't need apple cider vinegar for that. Just watch a Thomas DeLauer video on spot fat reduction. That'll get you there. And so very simply, if you drink apple cider vinegar and you are in a caloric surplus, you will gain weight. You will not lose fat. Simple as that. And this takes me to a deeper philosophical communication of fat loss, which I've said in the past. However, I understand there are many new people to this community. You cannot so simply hack fat loss. Fat loss happens on a per need basis, meaning that your body burns fat when it needs to. It's not so simple to just hack the process with certain supplements or substances. And also your fat loss is heavily related to thermoregulation, the body's temperature. Just remember that your body, your fat metabolism is a smart and complex process. It's not so easy just to hack it with substances promoted by hacks. And so there's a YouTuber called Michelle McDaniel. That's easy for me to say. And she has a channel called My Thoughts Will Probably Offend You. And if you like, she's kind of like me but not bold. And she recently made a video destruction of an Instagram model promoting extreme weight loss with a hacky type supplement. And part of her video referenced apple cider vinegar, again, with redonkulous fat loss in a ridiculous amount of time. And so I thought I just wanted to mention that because that was a very nice video. You see, I can make friends on YouTube. To all the YouTubers out there, not just in fitness, but in other genres who are promoting apple cider vinegar, you are banking those millions of views. <laughs> But those tactics are everything I stand against. Your information is terrible because you want your subscribers to believe that your fat loss was caused by this drink, not by the overall processes of a caloric deficit created over time through nutrition and training. And the nutrition protocol, again, will be very personal to people depending on their lifestyle. And the training protocol, again, very personal to people depending on their characteristics. And so it's very important when we give information that we can't just give anecdotal information to wider audiences, i.e., this is what happened to me. This is my opinion. These are my experiences. Now, that's fine if we're talking to our friends or family and we want to discuss discuss these things. However, when people are projecting information, for example, on YouTube to wider audiences, we cannot give anecdotes. We have to try and give evidence-based information. And so in the future, we may 
develop, arrange, and breadth of information, evidence-based science and research where we find the apple cider vinegar does have fat loss applications. Of course, that could happen in the future, but in the current state of research, we do not have that. And so anybody telling you now that ACV directly causes fat loss in any way is incorrect. And indeed, even in the future, if we do have better evidence-based information, the people telling you now, again, were incorrect. Because as far as I'm aware, they do not have a crystal ball where they can see into the future. And so the main takeaway of this video is to get the song Ice Ice Baby stuck in your head all day. You are welcome. I'm James Linker. This is a Shredded Sports Science. I will see you soon.